Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you about brown adipose tissue and what is the effect of brown adipose tissue on electron transport chain. So before we get into brown adipose tissue, so let me give you a little bit uh, information about uh, different types of adipose tissues that we have in our body. So there is white adipose tissue, so this is what is most of the adults will have and why white adipose tissue is referred that way, it is one of the reason for this is white adipose tissue will have less number of mitochondria. Now the brown adipose tissue, this will be seen in neonates and as we, as the neonate get like grows up as infant and a child and as it gets into adulthood so there will be a decrease in the amount of brown adipose tissue and one of the reason why brown adipose tissue is called as brown adipose tissue it is because brown adipose tissue will have high concentration of mitochondria in them now there is something which is in between two that is white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue so the tissue white adipose tissue which is in between is uh, B's adipose tissue. Now the number of mitochondria in B's adipose tissue will be much more than white adipose tissue will but will be much lesser than brown adipose tissue. Now these are the three exam means three types of adipose tissue uh, white B's and brown adipose tissue and also you need to remember brown adipose tissue is at highest concentration in neonate and as we grow older and brown adipose tissue quantity decreases. Now, let's move on to see what is the importance of brown adipose tissue. In order to know the importance of brown adipose tissue, so I need to explain you uh, something called as uncoupler of an electron transport chain. Here I have drawn outer mitochondrial membrane, so that is OMM, outer mitochondrial membrane and this is intermembrane space here and then we have inner mitochondrial membrane and then we have matrix of mitochondria. Now in the inner mitochondrial membrane, so we have electron transport chain that is uh, situated, so electron transport chain, so it is situated here. So this is the electron transport chain complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4. And also we have ATP synthase here which has got F0 subunit and F1 subunit. So when NADH plus H plus and FADH2 are available and as the NADH plus H plus it gets into complex 1 and FADH2 gets into complex 2. So you can watch my electron transport chain video and all the details and uh, basic principle of electron transport chain in the video link appearing above right, uh, right corner above right now. Anyway, so when the electron transport chain is running, so the protons which are moving from matrix side of mitochondria into intermembrane space. So there are three complexes which will pump these protons from matrix side into intermembrane space and that is complex 1, 3 and 4. So continuous action of electron transport chain will pump this, these protons from the matrix side into intermembrane space. So as this concentration gradient builds up in the intermembrane space, proton uh, concentration gradient is building up here and that will create what is called as proton motive force. Once sufficient proton motive force is created, so during that time protons will start to flow from matrix in, uh, intermembrane space back into the matrix through F0 subunit of ATP synthase. So during this time ATP synthase will phosphorylate ADP with PI to make ATP. So ADP will be phosphorylated with the PI and that is inorganic phosphate to make ATP. Now this is how proton motive force is created by electron transport chain by transferring electron uh, protons from matrix side into intermembrane space and they return back to the matrix. All this is possible because your inner mitochondrial membrane is 
relatively impermeable to protons. Now, what if you uh, create a pore in the inner mitochondrial membrane? So what I'm, I'll be doing now is I'm going to create a pore in the inner, uh, inner mitochondrial membrane. So uh, I'm going to take uh, insert a pore here. So consider that I am, a cre I am creating a pore here in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So when I create a pore in the inner mitochondrial membrane, so what happens is protons, they start to flow from intermembrane space through this pore into the matrix. Okay, so instead of coming through ATP synthase here, so that's the route to which they need to come. Now they got an alternate route so that way they also will start to come from this alternate pore here, here. And that's how the proton flows and since now they don't flow through ATP synthase, so the proton motive force, whatever the energy that is present in that proton, it will be simply released as heat. And this heat will increase a body temperature. The body temperature will be increased. And now because of this what happens? Electron transport chain continuously it will be going on but the problem here is ADP is not phosphorylated with PI to make ATP because not many protons will come through ATP synthase so they are all coming through this proton channel here that is a pore which is opened up. Now because of this what happens so ADP level rises in the matrix ATP level decreases. When the ADP level rises, so ADP will stimulate TCA cycle, so there will be increased space of TCA cycle and they will produce this NADH and FADH2 and that will get into electron transport chain and in fact electron transport chain will run at a faster rate than before and also there will be heavy consumption of oxygen leading to increase in respiratory rate. But the problem here is the proton gradient is not built because all the protons they will escape through this alternate pore. Because of this what happens in spite of increase in electron transport chain so the cell won't be able to make ATPs. So it means phosphorylation is not going hand in hand with electron transport chain oxidation. So basically we have separated oxidation from phosphorylation process and this is based, so it means you have uncoupled oxidation from phosphorylation. That is why any agent or any molecule that will create a pore in the inner mitochondrial membrane, they are referred as uncouple, uncouplers, uncouplers of electron transport chain are also referred as uncoupling agent. Now with this background, let me explain you what is the effect of brown adipose tissue onto our electron transport chain and which is the molecule which is uncoupling and that is present in brown adipose tissue. Now here is the brown adipose tissue, consider the mitochondria is present in brown adipose tissue, a protein called thermogenin or also referred as UCP1 that is uncoupling protein 1 present in brown adipose tissue which is called as thermogenin and this thermogenin is now acting as an uncoupler on electron transport chain. Note that we have different types of uh, UCP1s in across our body so they are referred as UCP1, 2, 3, 4, 5. UCP1 is found in brown adipose tissue, UCP2 is found in most of the tissues, UCP3 is found in skeletal muscle, UCP4 and 5 are found in neurons. Now in this particular video I will be concentrating myself on UCP1 and that is thermogenin. Now the thermogenin whenever it is active, whenever it is opened, during that time thermogenin is going to allow protons to move from intermembrane space back into the matrix and will have an uncoupling action thereby decreases the efficiency of electron transport chain. So it means it is going to produce heat rather than effective ATP generation. So that's the action of thermogenin. Now how thermogenin is controlled so and what is the effect of cold on to thermogenin. So whenever person is exposed to cold as I have shown here, so there will be stimulation of sympathetic nervous system here. So sympathetic activity will go on and that will release norepinephrine 
and norepinephrine will activate a lipase enzyme triacylglycerol lipase enzyme now the triacylglycerides are undergoing lipolysis and releasing fatty acids now the fatty acid which is coming into the mitochondrial matrix it will go and act as a positive modulator on thermogenin so this is how the thermogenin is modulated in response to cold so fatty acids acting as a positive modulator on thermogenin so it means it will lead to opening up of thermogenin here when the thermogenin opens up it means protons will start to leak from intermembrane space back into the matrix it means the energy instead of capturing as atp it will be released as heat now because of this what, what happens as i explained before so proton motive force is not sufficiently built that means atp synthase won't be able to sufficiently create atps so phosphorylation has decreased here but the protons continue to move through thermogenin so producing heat this is how a neonates they will generate heat to maintain their body temperature because when the birth occurs so basically uh, neonate will be coming from high body temperature to uh, means the high, higher environment uh, environment where the temperature is more compared to a uh, colder environment outside in the world so it means uh, baby has to maintain the body temperature and that will be done by the, with the help of ucp1 and that is thermogenin this is why neonates will have more brown adipose tissue than adults anyway so the fatty acid is having it will have a positive effect on thermogenin now when the adp is not phosphorylated sufficiently with pi to make atp so obviously there will be increase in adp levels in the mitochondrial matrix whenever there is rise in adp levels in the mitochondrial matrix or whenever there will be rise in gdp levels in the mitochondrial matrix and that you see when tca cycle is down so they both of them adp and gdp will have a negative effect on thermogenin and they will close the thermogenin uh, pore there when the thermogenin pore is closed so protons are no longer moving through this thermogenin it means your electron transport chain will be effectively maintaining proton motive force and then it, it uh, protons are moving from intermembrane space back into the matrix through f0 subunit of atp synthase it means adp is now phosphorylated with pi to make atp so this when this happens your fatty acid that is there here it will be oxidized into acetyl coa and acetyl coa will be ox uh, further oxidized in tca cycle so this is how in response to cold so thermogenin opens up and generate heat but when the energy is less during that time adps and gdps they will close the thermogenin and they override the action of fatty acids and make the electron transport chain more efficient thereby make some atps there so this is what is the effect of brown adipose tissue on our Uh, body through thermogenin action and you see more of brown adipose tissue in neonate and that will help them to generate heat to adapt or accommodate to the new world or new environment that they got in so that's all about uh, brown adipose tissue and in my next video i will come up with what is the effect of thyroid hormones on brown adipose tissue thanks for watching and see you in my next video Take care.